Amen. I'm speaking to us this morning on how to be healed from any disease, which I titled How to Live and Not Die. How to be healed from any disease. God said we need to. The root of sickness and disease should be destroyed. How to live and not die. Put it there. How to live and not die. But it's actually how to be healed from any disease. So it has, it has two titles. You can put it in how to be healed from any disease or how to live and not die. Now, some years ago, just listen to this. I, I, I had a testimony. Some years ago, I had a testimony by Nova, Nova Hayes. Some of you can read his book on how to live and not die. But I had a testimony. On, he went to a church to minister. Nova Hayes is, a, is, a, is an, uh, a minister in America. I think he's late now. He died two or three years ago, but he's at the age of 90-something. But go and read the book. So I have this testimony. I went to minister in a church. And it was teaching on the power of God healing. And so he said this church, he ministered. Then the pastor has a double doctorate degree. He's a doctor, and then he has another doctor, blah, blah. So he said, after he finished preaching that morning, the pastor said, um, Brother Novel, I think you might be able to help one of our brothers. And I said, for about what? He says, he's been in coma for a long time, and um, they said he would have died. The doctor says he would die yesterday, yes, last night, you know. But they called this man that he didn't die last night. He's still alive. I mean, but he's in coma. He's breathing. <gasps> you know. And so, he said, would you go there and pray for him? He said, yeah, sure. I'll go and pray with him. So he said, they went together with the doctor. When they got there, the nurse said, sorry, you can't come in. Nobody's allowed inside except the parents and the wife. The doctor said, look, I'm the pastor. I just came to pray for this blah, blah. Can you? He says, okay. You can. He said, the nurse said, even the even the parents are only allowed two minutes, two minutes inside and out because it's in a very critical condition. Only the wife can stay. So, so he says, yeah, we have permission of the parents, we are here. He says, okay, you go in for two minutes and pray. So he said, he said, he started thinking, what will he do in two minutes? Holy Spirit, what are you saying? What can I do in two minutes? So, he said, he went in there and then he got there and says, he said, everybody was sad. The whole place, I mean, he said, look, I saw a young lady, 20-something-year-old lady. I mean, her eyes were red, crying in pain, sitting by her husband. And then the man was breathing. <clears throat> mm, Take some minutes before it goes the other one back. And the doctor says, maybe today. Since he didn't die yesterday, he might die today or tomorrow. They're not sure. He says, everything has been done. And gradually, the machine is going down, you know. So he said he went in, they came in, he looked at it, looked at the lady, and then he began to pray. He said he prayed for healing. He was saying, Holy Spirit, what can, I, what can we do? Two minutes. They've not even finished the prayer. The nurse came in and says, sorry, you have to go out now. That's all you can do. As he was about to go out, he said, the Holy Spirit just spoke, rose in him and said, you know, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, if you obey Mark 11.23, if the law of Mark 11.23 is obeyed, he says, you will be healed, you will be whole. So he said, the law of Mark 11.23. So he told the lady, he said to the wife, can I see you for one minute? Say yes. Then he said, the Lord says to me, if Mark 11.23 is obeyed, this your son, your husband shall be made whole. He said, so what do I do? Mark 11.23, they are believers, but he doesn't know Mark 11.23. He says, all you have to do is say, say just declare, say, in the name of Jesus, says my husband shall live and not die in Jesus' name. I declare my husband shall live and not die in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband shall live and not die in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband shall live and not die in Jesus' name. So he just told her, I said, declare that. Lady says, somebody says, just say it thousands of times daily, every time, opportunity. So the lady sat down there and then the nurse pushed them out. And then the lady began to declare, my husband shall die, I shall not die, but live in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. Thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. My husband shall live and not die. God said, I can hear, have whatever I said. I thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. And they left. He said, six months after, he came to that church again. 
He didn't hear anything. He left the next day. He said he was about to preach. And the pastor says, uh, we have a testimony for Brother Novel. He says, a testimony for me. Why, why do you want a testimony? He said, and this young man came out, dashing color, came out with his. And then his wife came with him and says, actually, six months ago, I was in the, I was in the high CU. I was in coma, ready to die. He said, but you came and told my wife to begin to declare the word that he told my wife, if Mark 11.23 is obeyed, the law of Mark 11.23 is obeyed, he says, my, I shall leave. He says, and my wife did that. The he says, he was shocked because the guy has changed. He was totally healed. Every part was all. God changed the story. God is going to change somebody's story here this morning. I'm going somewhere. Why am I saying this? So he said, in a few minutes, he says, the guy, the, 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 you know, he was saying he was interested in the wife more. He says, wife? So you said that? Say, yeah. He said, when you started saying it, how many times you said it? The woman said, I said it. How, I just keep on saying, declaring it, declaring it. I just sat down there. That was the only hope I had. I just kept on declaring it. Same as I've been a thousand times a day. And then he says, did you see any change? He says, the first day there was no change. Second day there was no change. Third day there was no change. He said, I think the third or fourth day, he said, his breathing began to get normal a little bit. Then I saw that I was getting normal a little bit and I put more fire. I began to say it. I began to say it. I began to say it. He said, the fifth day, sixth day, the breathing was getting normal. By the seventh day, the breathing was normal. In the seventh day, he came out of coma. In two weeks, he was out of the hospital. The people are still alive. I read that story several years ago, and it ginger something in my spirit. So, now the story is this. Some of you have had this testimony. So I went to the hospital to pray for someone. And then they called me. And then, they, then I met this man. Some of you have had the story. Some of you are part of the story. Some people are here. His name was called Audu. This man, Audu, has a very bad tuberculosis that has spoiled his left lungs. They said the lung is totally spoiled. They said he cannot live. He's lame. He cannot walk. And so when I went to the hospital to pray for someone and I had to pray for him, and then the doctor told us that the man, that it's too late, that this thing, there's nothing they can do physically anymore, that he will die. So as I prayed for him and I was about to leave, that thing came to my mind. If Mark 11, 23, is obeyed, he will live and not die. I didn't know, it just came to my spirit. So I went back, I said, Aldo, Aldo was a Muslim. Do you understand Mark 11, 23? He says, no. Same story. True story. He says, no, I don't understand Mark 11, 23. I said, God says to me, if the law of Mark 11, 23 is obeyed, you will live and not die. He said, how do we do that? I said, I'm going to show you. So I prayed for him, caused the disease in the name of Jesus, and I began to say, I said, say after me, say, I shall not die but live in Jesus' name. Jesus is my healer. Tuberculosis, get away from me. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Leave my body now. I shall not die but live in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, get away from me in the name of Jesus. Jesus is my healer. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. You know the lady? In the testimony of that lady, says she kept on saying, thank you, Jesus, for healing my husband. Anything you thank God for before you see it, you eventually see it. Many of you are waiting to see before you do Thanksgiving. But when you thank him for it, before you see it, you eventually what? See it. Said so tuberculosis, get away from me. I shall not die but live in the name of Jesus. Jesus is my healer. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me. I began to, we said it together for about 40 times. He said, how long do I say? I said, that is your medicine. Doctor says you will die, but you don't have to die. That is what? Your medicine. I said, began to say it. Began to say it. He said, how many times should I say? I said, 50 times, 60 times. Began, just say it. And he began to say it. Began to say it. They say we die that month. Ladies and gentlemen, by the end of that month, this man did not die. Not only did he not die, doctors came and said, say, instead of him, so before he was getting leaner every day, they were, you can see his ribs outside. Suddenly, he started growing, growing, growing. By the time they went to go and take the x-ray, they found out that the lungs has been replaced. New lungs. You can say Hallelujah. Now, not only that, how did he say to me, he was lame, he couldn't walk. They say he will never walk again. He said to me, he said, if that thing can walk for my lungs, then it can walk for my legs. He said, God told him that if he applied the same, he can walk for his legs. But he wants to come to church and thank, do thanksgiving and thank God 
because God is going to make him work. So he was troubling me, I should bring him to church. Eventually, I brought him to church. This is why I said he wants just wants to come and do thank God for his life that he saved and that he's going to work. And he began to apply the same thing. You know, the physiotherapist says he cannot, the legs, he has crutch that he cannot walk. He says all the nerves that lead to the legs are dead. But he came to church. That day he came to church, he came to the altar. We prayed for him. And I was, I shared it. I was thinking that after that, we'll just pray for him. He'll just rise up and walk. But he didn't rise up and walk. I was disappointed. He too was a bit disappointed. But he kept on. But something happened. I didn't go there because he didn't walk that day. I didn't go there for about two or three weeks. Then I went to the supermarket and I met the supermarket and I met the physiotherapist. He said, Pastor, we haven't seen you. He didn't come. He says, but you know what? Something happened. That suddenly, I noticed that his legs is trembling. He says, the nerves are working again. He said, I don't understand that, but that nerves that were thought were dead are what? Are working. Anyway, cut long story short. How do not only was healed, but you got up and walked. I went to the, I went to, I went to, um, I went to the hospital one evening to go and see one of our brothers that was sick, and then as I parked, his own word was this side. I was on this side. As I parked, I looked at him, he was sleeping. I said, how do you? He was sleeping. And then suddenly, I heard noise in the other side of the house. He said, hey, hey, Kilele, what is going on? Hey, 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 what is going on? Blah, 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 blah. Okuri. Because Aldu was on the bed, he got up, and he began to walk in the hospital. And I said, how do you happen? He said, he said, I was sleeping, deep sleep. Somebody woke me up. I said, Pastor, I'm calling you, so get up. So he said, he got up, and he was walking. He had forgotten that I couldn't walk, and he was walking. He came to church. He came to this church some times ago, when we just started. There was another time he came to look for me, to come and, to come and talk to me. He came to this church, come and look for me. He's still alive, healthy, and he's still walking. Now, why did I tell you that story? The laws of God, laws of faith are constant and reliable. The same law that I had, that this man applied. Are you listening to me? I had a testimony. He applied it in America. I applied my own wear hair. And it's what? It worked. Because laws are what? They are constant. They are reliable. And they are trustworthy. And they will always work. Are you listening to me? Laws are constant, they are reliable. If it is followed, if you not, you follow one, you don't follow the other one. If it is followed, if they are reliable, they are constant, and the world is what? Produce results. They produce the same result. Laws of faith are the same everywhere. The Bible says, God is not, is, is not, is, is, is rich world that called, he has not a Greek nor Jew. He's, he's not, he doesn't favor anybody. You follow the laws, and then it works. Are you listening to me? So the laws of healing are the same. Laws of faith are the same. I told us that the Bible says that this word is governed by laws. There are three types of laws. Everybody in this church should know that by now. We have what? Natural laws. Then we have what? Physical laws. And then we have what? Spiritual laws. Which one is the highest out of the three? Spiritual laws. The spiritual laws controls the other two. Are you listening to me? Spiritual laws controls what? The other two. The laws of faith is the highest. Is, is in spiritual law. That's why it can override. And I told us, I said, spiritual law is higher than physical law. Physical law is higher than laws of nature. That is why when you take, for example, you take a metal, you throw it inside the water, it's what? It will sink. But the physical law, laws of flotation, that's why a ship that is bigger than this church, we put on the water and it will not ship, sink. Because it does not sink because it's following another law, law of flotation, a higher law. A plane cannot fly without a, a higher law. But spiritual laws are higher. If you are here on Wednesday, if you are not here, please get the CD or get the, go and watch it again. I talk about how, how the man threw an axe head into water and the axe head sank. And then the law of faith, Elisha came, threw stick there and the axe head floated because the law of faith is higher than the law of nature. Everyone say higher law. So there's a higher law. I mean, that's the Lord, that's the Lord Jesus operated. The Holy Spirit was showing me, he said, look, you see, we, human beings, were able to operate in that law, in this higher law, the law of the Spirit, very well. But sin was one that dropped us. And Jesus came to show us how to operate in that law. You know, angels move at the speed of light. 
That's the way, that's the, that's, that's, the, that's the speed Adam was moving before sin came. That's why Jesus, angels will just, they go to heaven, boom. When Jesus, Jesus was able to walk on water because he was operating a higher law. The law of nature say man must think. But he showed us by the law of faith, if you understand that, Peter was able to walk on water. That means possible. Hallelujah. If you understand how he walks. Amen. So, laws are there. So, how do you, how to live and not die? <laughs> to operate, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, when, when you are sick, how to live and not die? How do you get out of this? Let's open, we just look at that today. How to get healed of any disease, you know. Let me, let, me, let, 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 let me say something here as I go on, that disease, Satan is the author of sickness and disease. Hallelujah. Is the author of what? Sickness and disease. Sickness and disease came with what? With the devil, I mean with sin. Disease are spiritual, they are also physical. Hallelujah. Disease are not only, they are, they are, not all diseases are caused by demons, but every disease there's a sweet of infirmity behind it. Demon causes disease. I just give us two examples. Mark, I mean, 9 verses, um, Luke 13 verse 16. Also, there was a woman in church, but on the Sabbath day, Jesus was preaching, and there was a woman that was bent because she had a spirit of infirmity that has been bent low for 18 years by the spirit of what? Infirmity. So, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham who Satan has bound? Think of it. For 18 years, we lose on the Sabbath day. Go to verse 17. And then, I mean, the Bible says, Jesus said, Woman, thou art loose of your infirmity. And what happened? Immediately. Immediately. The Bible says, Immediately, the man was, the woman was, the woman was set free. You know. Verse, I mean, I mean, go to verse 14. Look at verse 14. 14. You know. The woman was set free. So, this woman was bound by the spirit of infirmity. Uh, the, the difference, how do you know that when a disease is... Look at verse 13. 12, 13. Let's start for 12, 13. Let me just show you for one minute because of time. You know, the, the, the people were angry. How can Jesus eat on Sabbath? When Jesus saw her, he called, him, called her to him and said, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And verse 13... And he laid his hands on immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Let me say this. You see, when sickness are caused by demons, ladies and gentlemen, if healing comes, when you pray for them, when you cast out that demon, there's immediately there's restoration. Immediately there's restoration. But if it's if it's I don't have time to go into that now. But if it's or if it's caused by other things, I mean Satan is behind it, if it's the healing part, then so sick if the sickness then healing. There's miracle and there is healing. Miracle is when healing is immediately. Healing is, takes a bit of time. It's gradual. It says, shall be healed. You know, shall be healed. Healing, miracles. Healing can be immediate and can be gradual. When it's immediate, it's a miracle. But when it's gradual, it's still healing process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan causes sickness and disease. You see that it was the woman, it's the spirit that bound that woman. In Matthew 8, verse 28 to 32, I mean, you, you also see it. In Mark 9, verse 9, 17 to 27, it says, a child that had ep epileptic, you know the story of that child that had epileptic. It was a spirit that was causing that thing to, 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 for that woman to. So, Satan, demons are responsible for a lot of sickness. I wish I could go into that. If behind every sickness is the spirit of infirmity. That was why when Jesus was giving the altar, he says, the first he said, cast out demons. After the demon is cast out, then the sick will be healed. Hallelujah. Then the sick will be what? Be healed. Now, let's take a look quickly because of time. If you look at the, the sickness of Job, who was behind it? Satan. And then, what the Bible says about Jesus? How God, I know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, healing all that are what? Oppressed of what? Of the devil. So, sickness is an oppression of what? Of Satan. This morning, somebody is being set free from oppression. Amen. See, I'm set free from oppression. Amen. See, I'm set free from oppression. 
So you can see cases. Now, let's take a look at how to get healed of, from any disease or how to live and not die. If the doctor says you are going to die or they say this disease is not going to work, how do you live? You can listen to this series over and over again. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Because of time, I'll just take a quick shot on that place and the Holy Spirit is going to help us. Holy Spirit, give us understanding. The Bible says, therefore, verse 1, Romans 8, therefore there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is no condemnation. The first thing, if you want to, how to live and not die, if you want to, if you, if you, if you, if you want to make sure that you, you get healed, is first, remember the God that you are not condemned. God does not condemn you. One of the things the devil tells you, you are sick because you have done this. Tell the devil, there is no condemnation than that Christ Jesus. You may say, it is your hard work. It is this one. It is that one. You know, when people are sick and they're about, and they're terribly sick, they always find something to condemn themselves with. Hallelujah. They say, it is maybe because I did this one, because I did that one. That's why God has not had me. Blah, 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 blah. No, sir. The Bible says, there is no condemnation than that what? That I, Christ Jesus. Everybody say, there is no condemnation. Bible says, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and what? Go and sin no more. God is not condemning you. So don't let the devil condemn you. And say the reason you are sick is because of so, so, so. Yes, there might be. But when you ask forgiveness, he is faithful and just. What? To forgive and to cleanse us from where? All our righteousness. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them that are what? In Christ Jesus. Now, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of what? Of sin and death. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two laws that governs this life. There are two laws that governs the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is the law of nature. That's what operates in the normal range, in the normal human being range. But there's a higher level. Everybody say higher law. Everybody say higher law. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Everybody say free. I'm free from the law of sin and death. So what you need to know is that, I mean, if you operate the law of spirit of life, you will beat the law of sin and death. You know, the law, of sin, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a higher law than the law of sin and death. You see, death and sickness operate under the law of sin and death. Death, sickness, pain, all this operate under the law of sin and death. But, but the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a higher law. Hallelujah. For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of what? Of sin and death. So if you want to beat the law of sin and death, what do you do? Operate the law of spirit of life. Hello? The only way to beat the law of sin and death is to go to a higher law. So that means no matter what they have said, that you will die. This is incurable. This is not obtainable. This cannot work. There's a higher law. Let's say higher law. That's the law of what? Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free. So no matter what they have proclaimed on you, no matter what they have said about you, there's a higher law. If you cannot pray the higher law, then you can beat it. Hallelujah. The law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Look, okay, so let's, how do we operate this law? How do we operate it? Quickly, that's what we need to know. How do we get the law of spirit of life to work for us? Hallelujah. It says, verse 3, it says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, on the cross, he condemned the flesh. What he saying that the law of sin and death is powerless to do, what the law of sin and death cannot do, God did it through Christ Jesus. In sending Jesus to die, the Bible says it destroyed him that had the power of death. Hallelujah. Please open Hebrews 2.14. It says that had the power of death. Jesus came and destroyed him. So, I mean, so the, well, Jesus, the law of sin and death, this natural law, what they cannot do, in as much as, look at it, in as much as children have been partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death, he might destroy him. Who had? Everyone say had. Not has. Had the power of death. That is what? The devil. When Jesus died, he destroyed him that had the power of what? Of death. Verse 15. That is the devil. Oh yes, Jesus. And release those who through fear of death were lifetime subject to bondage. So, the law of spirit of life. Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death. That is what? The devil. And release those. He destroyed them that had the power of death. We are free from oppression of the power of death. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am free from the fear of death. Say, I'm released from the fear of death. Say, I shall not die. I will live to declare the glory of God. We are free from the oppression of the power of death. Luke 10, 19. What does it say? 
It says, he has given us power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Eh, so nothing shall by enemies what? Hurt you. And then in, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, death is an enemy. So we have been free from the power of what? Of death. Say, death cannot kill me now. Say that. <laughs> say, somebody say, I will live long. <laughs> say, I will not die of any disease. The fear of disease is the fear of death. The fear of any disease, the fear of death, the fear of cancer is I can kill. The fear of coronavirus I can kill. The fear of, so, but we are delivered from the fear of death. Hallelujah. Death, I will not die. Hallelujah. Christ died for us so that you can live. Hallelujah. He died young so that you can live to your old age. Hallelujah. So I say, I will live to my old age. Say, I will not die. I will not die suddenly. I will not die prematurely. My husband will not die. Now, hey, hallelujah. So how do you operate the law of spirit of life? How do you operate it? The first thing that you know that Jesus has freed us. He has done it. On the cross, the price was paid for you to live long. On the cross, the price was paid for you to, to, to be well. You know, the Bible says, we read that last week and on Wednesday, that the price for sickness and disease was paid for. At the same time, the price for sin was paid for. The two things that was paid on the cross, forgiveness of sin and healing of the body. Forgiveness of sin and healing of the body. Both of them were paid for. So, many of us believe that our sins are forgiven, but we do know that the price for sickness has been paid for. Since Christ has paid for it, you don't have to pay for it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, to operate the law of sin of life, we must begin. Let's look at verse 4. What does verse 4 say? It says, are you, can you put verse 4 there? It says, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. To operate the law of force, we must not live according to the flesh. Can you put NIV there? But live according to the Spirit. You see, if you want to operate the law of the Spirit of life, you have to stop, you have to stop living according to the flesh. Hallelujah. But start living according to the Spirit. You start, stop living according to the flesh. You start not allowing the things of this. You know, that, do who walk not according, NIV please. Who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Look at it. Who do not live according to the flesh. Some to the dictates of the flesh. If you, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled, met in us, you want the law of the spirit of life to operate, you have to stop living according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So how do I do that? Verse 5. Verse 5. Go to verse 5 now. It says, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desire. Those who live according to the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desire. Listen to me. You see, it says, so the battle is in your mind. Are you listening to me? The battle is where? In your mind. You want to operate the law of the spirit of life? It's in your mind. So those who live according to the flesh will, will set their minds on what the flesh desire. Those who live according to the spirit will set their minds on what the spirit desire. So what are we saying? For you to live and not die. When the enemy says you are sick or when this has happened, you have to begin to feed your mind with the word of God. Your mind, the battle is in your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, most people die because they give up first. They first give up in their minds. I'm, I can't make it. There's no hope for me. There's no this. So it says, if you live, you have to, if you live according, if you set your mind on the, on the, on the sins of the flesh, it says it will kill you. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the things of the flesh. But those who, according to the spirit, have their minds things on the spirit. Verse 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Is life. Hallelujah. To be carnally minded is what? So the battle is in your mind. If your mind is, the mind is the interface between the spirit and the body. The mind is the interface between the spirit and the body. It is the mind that controls the body. It is the mind that controls your life. You know, so Satan wants to control your mind. God wants to control your mind. To operate the law of the spirit of life, your mind has to be controlled and dominated by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life. If you continue to feed your flesh, you will die. But if you continue to feed your spirit, you will live. Hallelujah. What is this saying? While you are confessing the word, while you are standing the word, your mind must be governed by the spiritual things. You must feed your spirit and not feed your flesh. Oh, so what, is, what does that mean? People, if you are, several people are believing God for super healing. You want God to heal you. But you're always watching home video. You are feeding your flesh. The movies, how do you feed, how do you feed your, the, the things, if you, if, you, if you feed your flesh by the things, the things you watch, the things you see, the things you listen to, 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to stay healthy, you've got to feed your spirit with the right thing. You've got to feed your spirit. A child of God cannot, you can't watch all the movies. No. You can't be watching all movies, watching movies where they are killing people, where people are dying, where they are committing adultery. You are feeding the flesh. It will kill you. The disease, you, you can't walk in health. You can't walk in healing. You can't be listening to on, on corporal music. Music of the world. Because it's feeding your spirit. It's making the flesh to be stronger. You see, the mind that is controlled by the spirit is life. The mind that is carnally minded is death. The music you listen to is important, ladies and gentlemen. Don't play any kind of music when you are believing God. Because to be spiritually minded. The, the books you read. What are the books you read? What are the news? Many of us, you are believing God for healing. You want to stand in the way of faith. Or you stay with CNN every day. And you hear all the bad news of the world. How do you, your faith can go up. You've got to feed your spirit. What are the books you read? What are the kind of books are you read? You read newspaper from the morning to the night. You read every page. You see the page 10. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. You, you see, to be carnally minded is what? It's death. To be spiritually minded is what? It's life. You've got to, if, if you are fighting, if you want to stand in health, you want, you want, you want to operate the spirit of life, your mind must be spiritually fed. Your spirit must be fed 100% all the time. You must feed your spirit with words of life. Ladies and gentlemen, Words of life, you must feed your spirit. When you don't feed your spirit, to live and to operate the Lord's spirit of life, you must starve the flesh and feed your spirit. But those who continue to feed the flesh will reap death. Those who continue to feed the spirit will reap life. Hallelujah. You see, you cannot continue to eat the flesh and want to live. You see, so then those who are in the field, he says, look at what he says. To be carnally minded is enmity against God, verse 7. But and it, for it is not subject to the law of God. No, it cannot be. When your mind is carnal, it will not subject to the laws of healing. When your mind is carnal, it cannot subject to the laws of faith. When your mind is carnal, it cannot. You see, your, the battle is in your mind. Satan wants to control your mind. As long as he can have your mind, he can beat you. So what you need to do is to say, now... I am going to feed my spirit with the words of God, with the right medicine. Because the word of God is healing. The word of God is medicine. The mother of Joel Osteen, they said he was going to die. She had cervical cancer. Survival rate is, is like maybe 5%. People die. They don't spend one woman. They went to every hospital. They couldn't say, no, there's nothing you can do. But the husband brought her back in and says, look, if you're going to leave, then we've got to apply the law of spirit of life. And they put her in a room and began to play the word of God to her 24 hours. And she was receiving it. 24 hours. If you go to that room, that word, promises of healing. Go, go, go on the internet. 1,000 promises of healing. Healing promises. Healing promises. Began to feed. Began to feed. Ladies and gentlemen, it was, she was feeding her spirit. That month, they said she was going to die. She didn't die. Second month, she didn't die. By third month, she was cancer free. She didn't go to any hospital. She was cancer free. Because the hospital says they can't help her. But, you see, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It will not submit. When your mind is governed by the flesh, it will not submit to the laws of God. So you are believing God for healing. You are believing God to walk in health, sound health. And you are feeding your spirit. You know the latest music. Latest that one, latest that one. You should know the latest music in heaven. Hallelujah. You should know the latest movie in heaven. Hallelujah. You should know Jesus is coming back. So, I mean, he, you see, I mean, Romans 8. It says, but you, but you, if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So Satan is after your mind. Let's go faster. By the time you go to verse 11, it says, healing comes through your spirit. But if the spirit that raises Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body. What is he saying? He says, your, your spirit, when your spirit becomes strong, you see, healing does not come. Many of us are expecting healing to come from above. No. The Bible says he already healed us. The spirit of God that dwells in you. The spirit that dwells in you. That healing is coming from your spirit. It's coming from your inside. So, and that means healing is already inside of you. You have to allow it to take over. Hallelujah. So you have to feed your spirit and make your spirit strong. You see, how to live and not die, you must stay your mind on the spirit of God. If the spirit that is of Christ Jesus dwells in you, that spirit inside you will give life to your body. So you have to allow that spirit. You have to feel that spirit. You have to make sure that spirit is getting stronger and stronger and the flesh is going down. You see, you must stay your mind on the spirit. Feed your spirit continually with promises of healing. Scriptural truths on healing. Hallelujah. When you are sick, the doctor will give you medicine. All right? They give you medication, 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 medication. Medication is good. Hallelujah. But when you go to Proverbs 4, 
go to Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 21. The Bible says, my, my son, attend to my words. It says, my son, pay attention to my words and turn your hands from it. Verse 21. It says, do not let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart. Verse 22. It says, for they are life to those that find them and health to one's old body. That one health, change it to N King James Version, another, or it says or NLT. For they are life to those who find them. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. That word translated health says they are medicine. It's the same word translated medicine. They are medicine to all their flesh. So, how to live and not die? To be cured, you must take your medicine daily. Hallelujah. Doctor will say, take it three times. You must take it three. You must take the word. The word of God becomes health, becomes medicine. Medicine to your flesh. Medicine to your flesh. It says, they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. So you take, you see, the word, you must use your, your the word, the word. You must be feeding. You know, when you, when you take different medicine for different situation, all right? You are, if you are, they say, take this one, take this one, take this one. So if you need healing, you go to the word of God. Go and find all the scriptures that talks about healing. Jeremiah 30, 17. It says, I will restore you to health and I will heal all your wounds. Hallelujah. It says, I will restore you to health. It says, oh, as I, I will come with healing. Crucifix, I don't want that one because you have, you know, put NLC or put King James Version. It says, I will, look at it. I will restore you to what? Health. And heal all what? All your wounds. Declares the Lord. Because you are called an outcast. God says, I'm going to restore you to health. I will heal all your wounds. Hallelujah. Somebody say, God is restoring me to health. Say, God is healing all my wounds. You know, so you've got to feed your, find healing promises. They are, they, you go to the YouTube, just type healing promises. You find people who are reading healing promises there. Listen to it constantly. You are taking your medicine. Take it money. Take it money. Somebody said, if you are sick, you know, take your medicine. Take Matthew. Take Mark. Take Luke. Those are powerful words. Take John. Take them. Take some in the morning. Take some in the evening. Take some in the evening. Uh, at night. It makes the devil to be vegetative. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So how to live and not die? You then, after you, I mean, after you have, because you've got to feed your spirit, then you've got to use your authority to drive out sickness and disease. Demons, you must begin to speak to your body. Speak to the symptom and command them to live in the name of Jesus. Look, the Bible says in Luke 9 verse 1, Let's take a look at 9 verse 1, NIV. It says, remember that God has given us authority. He says, when Jesus called, he gave them authority and power to drive out all demons and to cure what? Diseases. I just showed us, when you drive out the demons, the diseases are cured. When you drive out, drive out the disease, you have to drive it out. You have to say, in the name of Jesus, you will not kill me. I command you, leave my body in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in Jesus' name, I command every sickness, every disease, in my body. Da! You have no place. Say, I resist. I can't say, I resist. I, every symptom. In the name of Jesus, I shall not die. I shall live to declare the glory of God. Say, this headache, you have no right to my body. Out in Jesus' name. I resist you. I come against you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, when you begin to speak to your body, speak to the symptom, command the disease to leave, cause the disease in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, I mean, you do it. When you, you see, when your spirit is strong, then you cause, I mean, then the disease, after some time, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Listen, church. The problem is that many of us, we are the church's reason because when you see the symptom, the Bible says, by his stripes, you are what? You are healed. Everybody say, I am healed. You are healed 2,000 years ago. And when you ask God for healing, when you say, Lord, I receive my healing, I cause the disease to leave. It leaves. But you see, because you are still seeing the symptom does not mean you are not healed. That's where the church is seen it. Just because you speak to the headache once and it doesn't go. Look at that lady. She said, she, 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 for three days, there was no change. But she kept on declaring it. Just because you speak to it now, doesn't mean it's not. No, 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 no. The symptoms will leave. If you are, I mean, where, where your spirit is strong, your, your, your authority becomes strong. That's why when you are believing God and you are standing in faith, you don't feed on those small, small things. No, you feed your spirit. Get your spirit to be strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the mind that is governed by the flesh is hostile to the law of God. It does not submit to the laws of healing. 
So I mean, so the keys, to, to, to be, the mind that is controlled by the spirit, it will, the, your body will submit to it when your spirit is wrong. If your mind is dominated by the flesh, your body, your spirit will not submit to your, the laws, to, to, to the laws of healing. But if the Holy Spirit lives in you, your, through your body, though your body is subject to death because of sickness and disease, the Spirit of God who, living in you will begin to give life to that thing and will drive out the disease in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Healing comes through your spirit. It's from your inside. You know. So to activate healing power, to activate the anointing, the, to have, you have to begin by resisting the devil. You have to resist sickness in the name of Jesus. Three things you need to resist with. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You see, and you have to command your body to obey the word. Use your authority. Drive out demonic disease in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that strangers will hear my voice and cling out of their hidden places. Do you know that strangers, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sickness and disease is a stranger in your body. She's a stranger. So you don't allow strangers in your body. Will you allow strangers in your home? Will you allow illegal alien in your home? No, 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 no. Sickness are illegal alien. Or, 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 you see, refugees in your body. You have to, the Bible says, strangers will hear my voice and cringe out of their hidden places. You have to command the strangers to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you have to leave your space. They need to leave your body. Remember, illegal occupants. Illegal occupants don't leave easily. So you have to take authority. You have to, you, you, if you are the owner of the house, say you are an illegal occupant, get out. You may not want to obey you first time. You go again. Sometimes you go to court. You go about, you drive them out, you won't stop. This day, every sickness must be driven out. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says, in, it says, in the book of Luke, it says, the kingdom of God survives what? Violence. Only the violent take it by what? By force. If you are not violent with the disease, the devil will kill you. You've got to be violent. Everyone say violence. Not violence with your wife, no. Not violent with your husband, not violent with your children, no. Be violent with the devil, with the disease. The kingdom of God is not violent, only the violent taken by force. You have to be violent with the devil. You know, violence with the disease, address it. You know, cause it in Jesus' name. Peter said, Master, Master, the fig tree you caused is dried up. But did you notice that when Jesus caused it, did it dry up immediately? Did the fig tree die immediately? No. But the day he caused it, he died from his roots. The second day, he began to show. And when you cause sickness and disease, he died from his roots. Say, you cancer, I cause you to die from your root in the blood in the name of Jesus. Remember, you cannot be strong or violent if your spirit is weak. So feed your spirit with scriptural, scriptural healing promises and resist violently and the devil will flee from you. Also, remember that don't allow, verse 15, it says, it's the spirit that is just like that spirit, that spirit in you, you have to feel it, you have to be strong. You know, it says, don't allow fear to come in. You don't allow fear. For we have not received the bondage of spirit again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption. When the devil, doctors tell you something first that comes to your fear, say, hey, what is this? Fear, 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 fear. So you have to resist fear. God says, the reason you are sick is because you allow fear. Fear. So you resist the fear, you come against the fear. You see, when you come against the fear, the fear will run away. I will say, I resist fear. Say, I resist fear. Say, fear is the connection with the spirit of sin and death. Fear is the connection to the devil. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to verse 13, say, but you live according to the spirit, you will live. So to, to, so to live and not die, you have to free your spirit, you have to feed your spirit continually, use your authority to drive out the disease and stand on the word. You've got to be, you've got to be violent. So what are the things to do? Violent. Be violent with the devil. Violent with the thing. Feed your spirit. Stand on it. Say, I'm already healed. Say, no, you're not going to put me in this place. You know, I was listening to Crefford Dollar. He was sharing his testimony. How he was, he was, he was diagnosed of prostate, aggressive prostate cancer. They say in one month he would die. He said he went to, he said the first thing is fear. He first dealt with the spirit of fear. <laughs> and then he told fear, you cannot stay. No, I'm not going to die, I'm going to leave. He began to, every day was feeling the spirit. Another thing is that you must take communion. Everyone say communion. Everyone say communion. Every Wednesday we ask you to come and take communion. Communion is not just an ordinary food. It's bobo niche. He takes everything. 
He said he began to take communion every day, every day, every day. I've listened to several testimony. And that one was sitting from South, South Africa that had cancer. He said he's going to die in one month. Taking communion every day. Communion is the medicine of God. You feed your word. He says, you get the devil to, I mean, tell the devil to get out. He began to feel the spirit. He was taking communion. As he was taking the communion every day, declaring the promise of God, feeding the spirit, spending like five, six hours in the word of God. Within the space of one month, the cancer disappeared. I'm telling you. Mark 11, 23. Open it. So how do you live and not die? The Bible says, you've got to, Mark 11, 23. How to live and not die, how to drive out the disease. For surely I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, we didn't say, we didn't say, say to God, stop begging God, use your authority. Tell your neighbor, say, stop begging God. Say, so use your authority. Say, stop begging God. Use your authority. He didn't say, whosoever shall say to God. No, whosoever shall say to what? To this mountain. Be removed and be what? Cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. But believe that those things he that says he will be done, he shall have whatever he what he says. Who said this one? Excuse me. Who said this? Jesus. Go to verse, 20, verse 20, 21 and 22. Put it there quickly. I want, you, I want you to, and then we go to 23 back. Go to there. And Peter called, remember, behold, the victory which you caused as we died. Remember, the victory didn't die the same day. So, because you caused that, you didn't, the symptom is that does not mean it is not dead. It is dead. Hallelujah. And then he says to all, look at verse 21, 22. And Jesus answered, have faith in God. So, Jesus is the one speaking. And what did he say? Verse 23. For assuredly, I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast to the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he what He says. Jesus says you can have whatever you say. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Jesus says, I can have whatsoever I say. Jesus says, I can have whatsoever I say. So in the name of Jesus, I declare, I'm healthy. Everybody rise up on your feet. It's time to say something. Say, in the name of Jesus, I shall not die. Say, no disease can stay in my body. Say, with long life, will it satisfy me? I will not be short. I will not die suddenly. Say, I am healthy. Say, I am healthy. Say, I will live. I will not die. Say, no disease can stay in my body. Say, every disease in my body, die, die, die. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Say, I am healed. I am whole. Jesus says, I can have whatsoever. I say, I say, with long life, will it satisfy me? I will fulfill the numbers of my days. Listen, this works. It's not only work with disease. I was listening to the testimony of a man in Honolulu. You know, he, he, this man is in the same book that I read. I mean, testimony of Nova Hills. This man came to Brother Nova Hills and said, Brother Nova Hills, everything I have, I used to work for the sugar and fake factory. But I, was, I have an equipment that used to work for them. But the big companies came from America and they stopped giving us more small companies. He said, I'm in debt. Thousands of debt. Dollars of debt. Say, I can't send my children to school. I don't have money to feed. My wife has left me. I have nothing left. Life is difficult. Nothing is working for me. I'm in thousands and thousands of dollars of debt. I said, can you help me? He said, yeah. He said, if you obey Mark 11, 23 to work for you. I said, what does that mean? He says, you've got to declare. You've got to believe. You've got to start changing your mouth. Changing what you say. Begin to declare the word of God. Begin to declare what God said will happen. I said, what do I say? He said, begin to say, in the name of Jesus, I am prosperous. I command big corporation, call me, call me and give me jobs. Big corporation, in the name of Jesus, you will call me and give me good jobs. Big corporation, you will call me and give me good jobs. I command big corporations to call me and give me big jobs. I am prosperous. Oh yes, my God supplies all my needs. Ladies and gentlemen, the man began to say it. He said, how long? He said, say it every day until you are tired. The man said, he said it for one month. Nothing happened. Two months. Third month, he began to say it. He said, at the beginning of first month, so well, suddenly, <laughs> something happened. Those big corporations, those other that came from America, their equipment broke down. 
And so the big corporation began to look for him. So they gave him the first job. Gave him the first contract, $80,000. Said he did it. The next one, they renewed the contract after another month, $80,000. Then after another month. Before you knew it, everything he has lost, he became rich back. Everything began to work. 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 I'm saying this works. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, you can have, he shall have, whatsoever I want. He says. But the problem is that my people are not talking to the problem. They are saying the problem. They are not speaking to it. They are supposed to speak to the problem, not to not beg God. No, speak to it. Say it. Declare it. It, it works. It does, it's not only work for sickness and disease. It works for everything. Hallelujah. So what are you going to say? Say, so in I want you to make the devil mad this morning. Say, so in Jesus' name, I will never be sick another day in my life. Say, so I'm healthy. I'm healthy. Jesus says, I can have whatsoever. I say, I say, I'm rich. I'm wealthy. I'm blessed. I will not die. I will not be sick with long life. He will satisfy me. I am healed. I want you to join up and say, I'm healed. Tell three people, I'm healed. I'm healed. Go tell somebody, say, I'm healed. 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 Go and testify. Tell two, three people, say, I'm healed. Say, no, 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 no. Say, I cause every pain in my body. Any sickness in my body, die. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I mean, go tell them. 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 Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we have prayed. That's the word of God. It will work for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will work for you. It worked for me. I thought I was going to die, but I didn't die. I lived. <laughs> you will live. You will live. You will not be broke. In the name of Jesus. As we close this morning, all head bows, all eyes closed. There are some people here this morning. You know, listen, this does not work for you if you are not a child of God. You are here. God brought you to this place for a purpose. You know that you are not born again. You know that if Jesus comes today, you won't make heaven. That's not good. If you are not a child of God, you cannot walk or pray in this law. Bless the Lord. So, I just want to pray with you. Two sets of people I want to pray with. One, says, Lord, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender. If you are like that, just raise up your hand wherever you are. Just raise up your hand wherever you are. If you are like that, quickly, quickly raise up your hand. Who is that person? Two or three people that want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life for the first time. Say, I want to surrender my life. Secondly, the people that have backslid, you know you backslid in. You are not where you are with God before, but you want to start afresh with God. You want to begin afresh with God. Who is that person? You want to begin afresh with God. Raise up your hand wherever you are. Say, God, give me a new chance. Give me a new opportunity. There's somebody like that here in this service. Quickly, 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 quickly. Thank you. Say, quickly, who is that person? You want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Somebody wants to give their life to Christ for the first time. Who is that person? Raise up your hand wherever you are. Or someone who says, I have backslid in. I want to begin afresh. The Lord is saying to me, there are, two, there are a few of you here. You are hearing the devil that says you should not. Okay. Let's go the usual way. You are here this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that if Jesus comes today, you will make heaven. If this wind, this, this building, scatter up, bow when Jesus comes. And you see Jesus coming like this. And you are very sure that if Jesus appears, I'm speaking to you now, you'll make him raise up your right hand. If you're that person, raise up your right hand. Those who are sure, raise up your right hand. If you are not sure, don't raise up your right hand because Satan just wants to defeat you. He wants to mess you up. Don't let the devil mess you up. If you are sure, raise up your right hand. God bless you. If you know that if this roof cracks open and you see Jesus comes as I'm speaking now, you make heaven. You are very, very sure. If you are not very sure, you can be sure. If you are very, very sure, sit down. If you are not sure, just remain standing. If you are very sure, sit down. Don't sit, don't sit down if you are not supposed to sit down. There's someone that needs to sit. God bless you. Those of you that are standing, God bless you. Don't be shy. Those of you that are standing, God bless you. If you are standing, please come to the front. Let me pray with you quickly. Quickly. Come, come to the front. Come to the front. Come to the front. There's nothing to shy about. Come, 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 come. If you are here for the first time, doesn't matter. Clap your hands for them. Come, come, my brother. Come. Come, 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 come. God bless you. Come, God bless you. Come, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you are up there, please come to the front. Jesus wants to save somebody here this morning. Please come. Don't be shy. Just come to the front. Come to the front. Say, Jesus, I want you afresh. 
I want a fresh start. There are two people upstairs there that need to come forward. Please come forward in the name of Jesus. Come forward. Come forward. Let's quickly pray for them. There's just one more person. There. All head bows, all eyes closed. All head bows, all eyes closed. Nobody's business between you and God. As I'm speaking, God is saying to you, come forward. Come forward. Come forward. I'm asking you. There's one more person. You are struggling with it. Satan is telling you, don't come forward. If you are struggling, should I go or should I not go? That's the devil. Please stand up and come in the name of Jesus. We, we don't have time. We don't have time. Please come forward. Somebody upstairs. There's someone of you here that needs to come. Come down now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I just want to give you one more chance. One more opportunity. All head bows, all eyes closed. You know it to be sad for you to be in this service and not go to heaven. Some of you that attended our program for the first time yesterday and you gave your life to Christ, you can also come forward. You know, you can come. But there are people here sitting up there. You are not, you are not, you know, you are not sure. You know it in your heart. Satan is telling you, don't come. Please stand up and come. All head bows, all eyes closed. I'm waiting for that person. Just one more person. Just come out forward in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. I don't know, we don't have time. Don't miss this opportunity. Sometimes you go and altar call was made like this. The boy refused to stand up. He knew he was not born again. He refused to stand up. He was driving. He had an accident and he died. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. I'm just saying that somebody needs to come. Stand up and shame the devil. Those of us in front, congratulations because of time. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, just say, Jesus, come into my heart right now. I want you. I want you, Jesus. Let us pray. Say with me, say, Heavenly Father. If you're in front, can you say, Heavenly Father? I come to you in the name of Jesus you have promised that whosoever shall come to you you would accept today I know I'm a sinner forgive me all my sins I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior I believe he is the Son of God he died for my sins on the third day he resurrected so I can be saved Jesus Save me right now. Give me eternal life now. I receive it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Let me pray with you. You are here. Are you somebody like that here? You're here. Someone, you said this prayer, but you're not here. You said it from your heart, but you're not in front. Who is that person? Raise up your hand. Who is that person? You, didn't, you said it from your heart. You are sincere, but you didn't come from I just want to pray with you also, so that before I close, who is that person? That person, one more, one person. Where is the person? Raise up your hand. That person that said the prayer, my brother, is a brother, you raise up your, said the prayer. Okay, join them. Let us pray. Father, thank you for these ones who have given their life to you. I pray, oh God, that the decision is they shall be permanent in Jesus' name. They will not go back. They shall stand forever. Satan will not take it from them. Grant them long life. Grant them spiritual blessing perfect all that concerns them write their name in the book of life because we've prayed by faith in Jesus name Amen praise the Lord please follow them clap for them church clap for them follow please follow them they have a package to give you all of them just follow follow just follow please follow them follow them ladies and gentlemen if you gave your life and you are not here maybe you didn't come forward please go and join them in there they're going to give you something somebody say I shall not die I will leave to declare Alleluia. the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest for his mercy and just forever. The word of God will find expression in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. A very quick one. We're about to take our tithe and offering. If you have seat for the convention coming, package it together. If you have seat for transportation, package it together. God is said to do a new thing. Let me just take this covenant from the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 11. I'm going to skip it. Genesis 22 verse 11. At that moment, the angel of God shouted, on, shouted to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Lord, he answered. Verse 12. Lay down the knife. Don't hurt the lead in any way. The angel said, for I know that God is first in your life. You have not withheld even your beloved son. 
I know that God is first in your life. Even the angels could witness about Abraham. Can the angels of God witness about you that God is first in your life? Brothers and sisters, we've heard the word. God is set to do a new thing. He's set to take you from obscurity to glory. And he's going to do it. I'd like us to rise up, package our tithe. Package our tithe. Package our offering. Package our sin. Whatever you have for God, do it. Make God first in your life. Even when you don't, when you need something, you could go out for evangelism. Package yourself for God. And you see what God would do. I want you to do it with dancing, with smiling. The word said with gladness, with joy. We'll draw water from where? From the well of salvation. God bless us. Let's rise up. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He is picking away my sorrow that I am free. I got my brother, do you, bro? I got my brother, do you, bro? We say, because of Jesus. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Oh, yeah, I will lift up 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm taking the blessing from the same passage, verse 16 of it. Verse 50 said, Then the angels of God call on Abraham from heaven. Church, you have given. And hear the word of God, verse 16. I, the Lord, have sworn by my name, by myself, because you have obeyed, I will bless you. Amen. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless your home. The Lord will bless your family. He will give you good health. He will break protocol for you. In the name of Jesus. He said, I will bless you. I will increase you with blessing. And multiply your descendant. God will multiply your business. God will multiply your promotion. God will multiply your health. God will multiply all that you have. He will multiply your livestock. The Lord will increase you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. So Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Watch your word, O oh Lord. To bring it to pass. Right from this moment. In the life of your children. In Jesus' marvelous name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.